and ready to go. Are you ready to present? Might need to unmute yourself. Yes. Yep. All right. Okay. So everyone will have you do the usual thing. Um, again, on that exact same um, announcement right here. The second task, well, the link to that same Google Doc is there, or, you know, if you go to Docs, I'm sure it's probably one of the more recent ones you've worked on. And make sure you've copied that template of notes to fill in for Cesar and Grace. Uh, looks like you have two videos, which I posted links for, or sorry, just one video. Um, the other video is um, Grace's video, her portion of the presentation, but we'll listen to you first, Cesar, and then uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so... The dog called with uh, the template ocean issues presentation. Thank you. <laughs> um, the uh, oh, what was the doc called? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ocean issues presentation notes template. Again, the link is on that same Canvas announcement. Thank you. Okay, let me pull up your presentation. What was your topic again, Cesar? Don't think it I've was seen. warming seas. Yeah. I don't know why I'm not seeing it in here. Oh, oh, I see it. Sorry. It's like right in front of me. Okay. Um, all right. I'll remind everyone to mute yourselves so we can listen to Cesar. Uh, take it away. And then we'll, uh, once you're ready, just let us know if we need to watch a video or um, when you're ready to hand over to Grace and we'll watch Grace's recording. Uh, my presentation is about warming seas. And next. So ocean warming is effect of global warming where the ocean absorbs most of the heat trapped in the atmosphere. It, the graph you can see that the ocean absorbs 93% of the heat while the atmosphere only absorbs about 2.3% and the rest goes to other things like glaciers and ice. Next. This affects marine life because due to the increasing heat of the water, marine life is forced to go to other places. Marine life on the equator is usually impacted that is, as it's harder to find cool waters there. And they also have to go far to find colder waters, which can also affect their populations and how they live. Next. This also affects humans because a large source of food is lost when they leave the area, and this can affect native people there. The warm oceans also, also affect weather as the amount of hurricanes increased about 25% to 35% in the area. And rain amount has also increased in the area where this happens. This issue started by a part of global warming. So it's about 135 years ago that it started. And in the picture there, you can see that since 1901, the or sea surface temperature has changed since then due to the warming seas. Uh, this part is cool. Uh, and is this the whole portion or um, did you work on other slides too? Uh, this is my partner's portion. Okay. Uh, so there is a video we can watch of Grace presenting. Uh, okay. So um, why don't we... We can also watch the video that you, um, that is linked in that same doc. So if I exit out of this. Sorry, it looks like I've lost the controls. There we go. So first thing we should do is on that um, doc, I would watch uh, first the video on coral bleaching and then we'll listen, uh, you can watch Grace's video. So 
has anyone let me see here uh have you guys watched videos through zoom before does zoom actually play videos well or not really like through the screen anyone know i think it does i think it's better than webex yeah Okay, well, I'll still, I'll give you time to uh, pull it up on your own. Cesar, do you know, did you want us to watch the whole video or just a portion of it? I'm not Cesar? sure. Not sure? Okay. Let me pull it up and see how long it is. Okay, it's only two minutes, so... Um, all right, I'll have you guys, um, you can just watch that on your own. To fly a rocket ship, um, you need to be an optimist. And then we can come back together. Do we watch the presentation with Grace? No. Um, let's, yeah, we'll watch the coral bleaching video first, the two minutes 20, and then come back together about that. And then we'll go to watching Grace just so we can kind of all stay together in one beat. So right now, just watch the YouTube video on coral bleaching. And then just, uh, uh, I'll, I'll check in again once I've gone through it as well. All right. Was everyone able to get audio from that video? Was there no audio to it at all? No, there wasn't for me. Okay, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> I'm sitting here like I thought it was a Zoom thing. I was like, oh, is it like taking the audio from my computer or something? Um, anyway, okay. Well, hopefully it works though with um, Grace's video. So, uh, all right. So that's the other link that I posted there. Um, and it should just take you straight to a video that is in Drive that Grace just filmed herself presenting. Um, so try clicking on that. It should be able to play like right within. Um, yeah, it's just a clip and drive. So let me know if you have trouble accessing it. But otherwise, go ahead and watch it. I think it's about six minutes long. Um, why don't I actually, I mean, let's try, you guys want to try playing it through Zoom? Just so we can all watch it here. Yeah, yeah. we can try. Let's try it through this and see if see if it works well. So, all right, I'm gonna hit it. Hi, Mr. A. Uh, Mr. Spy, this is me and Cesar's presentation on warming seas. Uh, the film we uh, we chose was Cynodaria. Some of the physical features that make Cynodaria unique: they have radio symmetry. 
Radio symmetry, uh, they have a single entrance body cavity, which means that it has a mouth but no anus. They use their tentacles to catch their prey and they have no organs. Examples of cynodaria include sea anemone, jellyfish, and corals. Um, sea warming affects coral reefs. Um, the, high, the higher ocean temperatures cause the algae to die or to leave the uh, corals by a process called coral bleaching. Half of the Great uh, Barrier Reef in Australia has already been bleached to death. Mass coral bleaching is a global problem triggered by climate change, which occurs when unnaturally hot ocean water destroys the reef's colorful algae, leaving the coral to starve. They start to die off, which, dimin which diminishes reef diversity. Uh, here's a video about the Great Barrier Reef and how coral bleaching has affected it. All right, is she playing the video? Sorry, I clicked away from the... There you go. Oh, nice. So I guess she's playing the video within her... How do you think she did that? All right, let's jump in. monitoring the EPA. Let's go back. There we go. Um, currently, a lot of things are being done to preserve and protect Snedaria. The EPA, also known as the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, is monitoring coral reefs and protecting water quality water quality. Um, corals are also being transplanted from seas to mangroves where they can thrive in a cooler environment. Uh, the Coral Reef Alliance is scientifically monitoring water quality to understand the nature of uh, coral bleaching and identifying solutions. Uh, they are also building and updating an effective wastewater treatment um, in collaboration with local governments and community. Uh, they're building awareness among community, uh, the government, and tourism about the effects of poor water quality on human health and the environment. They are reducing sediment and nutrient delivery to coastal waters by motivating shoreline property owners to employ reef-friendly best practices. And finally, they're restoring streams, uh, watersheds, and vegetation to create healthy watersheds that capture and stabilize nutrients and protect um, and prevent them from reaching the ocean. Uh, the NOAA Coral Reef Conservation Program is also working with partners on ways to restore uh, corals. They're improving the uh, quality of habitat habitats where Coral settles and commu uh, creates communities, and they're trying to prevent the loss of corals and trying to enhance the resilience of coral po uh, population and trying to improve coral health and survival. Um, finally, the Mo Prairie Foundation is um, doing a Save the Coral Reef campaign to raise awareness. All right, I think that was it. Okay. What, did that come through all right on people's screens through Zoom? Like, was the, how was the audio? Was it like, was it spotty or did it just play like a normal video would? It was, good. Uh, it was pretty good. Like, yeah. Just like, at sometimes it was just like a tiny bit glitchy, but it was a lot better than uh, WebEx. Yeah, WebEx is, it was bad yeah uh, but okay that's good to good to know all right well sorry thanks for being my uh, guinea pigs with uh um zoom here i'm still catching on to where certain buttons are and things like that but um good okay well round of applause for uh grace and cesar
final presentation. Uh, any questions or comments on warming seas and uh, corals? Close things down here. So one thing I know um, went through that kind of kind of quickly, but for coral in particular, like corals come up before, it's it's really important as kind of like the rainforest of the ocean. Um, what's driving the bleaching stuff is that uh, it could be both the acidification or temperature change, um, which is what Cesar was talking about, how like surface water temperatures have changed, um, but also that the um, corals are a symbiotic relationship between two different organisms and when the algae gets stressed they produce a toxin that then that's why the coral expels them out that's what causes the bleaching that's why they turn white um, is they're essentially kicking out the producer that's inside of them that is making food from sunlight they're photosynthetic a lot like plants are um, and so finding ways to kind of prevent that from happening is the key one of the questions I have is that, um, and I don't know the answer to this at all, but do you think it would be worthwhile like trying to genetically engineer coral to be a little more like resilient to lower pHs or higher temperatures? Yeah, I think it would be because then like, if we like let them go to higher temperatures, we could just, uh, instead of like glow or water warming, ocean warming, killing them off, they could like stay alive. So I think it would be beneficial. Yeah, I don't know if that's happening now. I, I'm curious to see, I'd be curious to learn if there's research going into that because I mean, it's not really addressing the source of the problem. Like obviously money should go towards, you know, um, addressing global warming and, and trying to slow that down. But I think that, um, even in the meantime, or at least temporarily having, you know, introducing, we seem to be more capable of getting genetic engineering stuff going. So um, it'd be interesting to see if they could find a result from that. So great. Okay, well, so we have all given presentations. And as I said, I want us to vote. However, it's been three days. Um, we've all heard like, you know, these uh, 10 to 15 minute long presentations. So what I wanna do uh, as a middle task is you've all gotta come up with a shorter pitch. Now again, normally if we were in the um, classroom, I would have all of you. So the goal is that you all have to come up with a one minute pitch, right? You're summarizing your presentation basically. Um, so you have one minute to sort of just quickly summarize your problem, how funding could help address it, and why you should receive the funding. And normally I would give everybody Nerf guns and you'd all be holding each other one minute by firing at each other. We can't do that. Uh, but what I looked into was um, Flipgrid. So have any of you used Flipgrid in your other classes? Seeing heads nod. So, all right, so you should be familiar with this. Um, it is on that same list of tasks on Canvas. If you look at the third one, um, it says before you vote for the project to fund, you need to make a one minute Flipgrid video summarizing your issue um, and why, you know, how the funding would be used and why you should receive it. I have a link to a sort of like a grid. It's sort of like the class where I think that's where you can go to watch other people's videos. And then I've got a link uh, down to this specific assignment um, where it's gonna ask you to record just a one minute video. Um, I also included like a little pitch there. And I think I can pull it up. Um, here it is right here. So here's your class. So I think this is where videos will populate once you make them. And here's the assignment, uh, the one minute pitch. And I made uh, a little video here with Mina um, kind of explaining it. So here we go. This is just knows, so for this assignment, you have one minute to sort of make a pitch for your ocean issue. Why do you deserve the funding? So in that one minute time period in the video, you should summarize your ocean issue to remind us what it was you presented on, uh, explain what you would do with the $100,000 and why you deserve that money. And I encourage using stickers like you see here or props um, I would like my daughter to be able to enjoy the ocean and go diving on reefs. Uh, it's always good to save sea turtles. Uh, and you don't want to see this duck covered in oil. And I have no money anyway, so I could really use uh, some funding for that issue. So anything along those lines is good. That play okay through the through Zoom? All right, so that's your goal. Um, what I wanted to try doing was maybe do breakout rooms so that partners could get together 
um, just to make sure you're not repeating yourselves or maybe you know one of you wants to talk about the animal one of you wants to talk about the issue or something like that that and I just want to play around with how I would actually do this um, so bear with me here um, I've got the breakout room option and let's see in terms of groups we had there were five groups right so if I create five rooms sign nine participants five rooms I do it manually okay and it looks like then I just have to assign each of you so okay so Sydney and Chloe I'll put you together Um, Win and Ed. Okay. All right. So, Cesar, you're the only one who is, um, Okay, but now that is there. So did it automatically place you all in the rooms? Nice. Very cool. All right, now it's just me here. There's enough eutrophication then we're just not going to be able to swim in water anymore. <laughs> All right, yeah. so you got this figured out? I think so. How are you doing? Cool. And again, um, so each of you will make a one minute video. You're not making one together. Um, so like Sydney makes one, Chloe makes one. So. And it's like it has to have like different points, right? Like. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you can repeat yourselves a little bit, but um, that was the goal was just to touch base. And so, yeah, if one of you wants to like focus on one specific other part of the issue and one of you wants to take the other, um, yeah, that's fine. But it's okay if you repeat yourselves too. That's kind of unavoidable. So cool. All right. Thanks. Okay. It's so laggy. Hey there. Hello. Things working all right? Yeah. My connection is pretty poor. Oh, yeah? Edward are, you, are you getting more lag with this than you did with WebEx? No. Okay. Every once in a while, my wife, I just. <laughs> yeah. Just well, my, yeah, my computer just froze uh, yesterday, like in the middle yeah. of the lesson. Just everything just like unresponsive to anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens on WebEx to me a lot. I've crashed like three times in English class. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, we'll see if Zoom works a little, a little smoother. Uh, you guys clear on what you're doing? Yeah, we're pretty good. Yep. So again, you're each going to make one uh, one minute video, mm -hmm. um, and it's okay if you repeat yourselves every now and then. Like yeah, that's all right. Um, it's unavoidable, but um, that's what uh, that's what you should do. Cool. Cool. Um, oh, and have you? So you guys have used the breakout rooms before? Yeah. How do you, how does this, this end? I guess that's something I can do. Like I can just end the breakout rooms. Make everyone yes, work. you can do that. And then we can also on the bottom right, click leave breakout room and return to main session. Okay. All right. I guess I should have said time limit or something, but yeah, you can, yeah, there's time limits and stuff. Anyway. So. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll check in. So cool. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Hmm. This is pretty cool. Leave all rooms. Oh, what? Oh. Hi. This is pretty cool. Sorry, I'm just learning how to use this. <laughs> it's like, Bailey, you got some kind of background going too. Yeah, I put on a green screen like the first time that I use Zoom and it won't go away. So I just kind of have it. <laughs> You're in space the whole time. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a question. Yeah. So should we return to the normal class like right now because we just finished talking about it or should we like leave zoom all together and come back when we're done uh, that's a good question i had not thought this through uh what i i guess i should have said a time limit or something um i think you can come back to the main room if, if you're done chatting with the, uh, each other okay. and then um yeah you can just turn off your video or whatever you need to um and uh make the video and then come back in okay um, 
yeah, I'll probably just try to call everybody back together. I guess I should have set um, a set a certain time. Um, let's see, actually. So I don't know. I mean, I don't think these are going to take that long to make. So it's 1248 right now. Then why don't we say that at the, why don't we say we're going to meet together at 1 p.m.? All right. Is that all right? Yeah. So come back to the main room at 1 p.m. Or, or just be ready to resume class at 1 p.m. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks. Cool. Okay, figuring this out now. I'm getting Instagram notes. <gasps> do we? Wait, I'm do still, we? I'm still figuring this out, but uh, in terms of coming back to the main room, uh, let's plan to come back to the main room at 1 p.m. And wait, okay. do we make our flip good right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, plan to come back to the room by 1 p.m., okay? Okay. In like 10 minutes. Thanks. Yeah. You need to put earbuds in so you don't record over. So I'm just realizing that, um, yeah, let's let's plan to come back together at, at 1 p.m. So it gives you about 10 minutes to make your video, um, do all that stuff on, on Flipgrid. And then uh, so try to come back to the main room at 1. Got it? Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks, guys. Oh, they don't have a sea turtle. Okay, here we go. So I checked in. Um, What's up, guys? Hey. Sorry, I'm still, still figuring this out. Uh, it's pretty cool being able to like bounce around rooms and stuff. Um, yeah. You guys clear on what you're doing? Just making the uh, uh -huh. video on Flipgrid? Making a Flipgrid video. And then yeah. it would it be okay if like I do like the oil spills part and like what we need to clean up, like why we should get the money to help clean up the oil spills, and then Willis does the core data birds part? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, whatever you want to do. And it's okay to repeat yourselves. You know, I mean, that's inevitable because you both did the same mm -hmm. thing um but yeah that's the the goal is just to help you like coordinate with that so right. uh, and let's plan to be back in the main room at 1 p.m so that's in about 10 minutes does that yeah. work okay no worries. Cool. all right see you then cool. what's up cesar sorry to put you in a room all by yourself <laughs> Uh, I'm still figuring out, uh, still figuring all this out. Uh, good job on the presentation. So um, clear on what you're doing, just making a one minute flip good video. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and the plan is to be back in the main room by 1 PM. So that's in about nine minutes. Okay. So, and you honestly could leave this. You could probably leave the session now cause you're just here by yourself. So you don't have to coordinate with Grace. Grace, I think we'll do it on her own. And it's okay if you to repeat yourselves a little bit, that's fine. So. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll see you at one back in the main room. Okay. All right, is everyone able to like use props and add animations and all that stuff? Uh, it didn't let me. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah, Will was having some trouble like logging in as well as kind of getting it to run. Did anyone else have any login trouble? No? Okay. All right. That's good. Again, this is my first time using it with uh, like a class. I've used it for my grad school stuff before, but that's with much smaller um, crowd. You know, you're not making like a number of different videos. So um, in terms of viewing the videos, so do you all see the videos populate under the assignment or like do you have to go to like the, the second link, that, the class link that I posted? You can see them after you post yours. You see them? Okay, cool. So that'll be part of the homework. We'll wait on... Looks like most people have them in. But part of your homework will be to view each other's um, videos. And uh, then I think the next time we, it'll be part of the homework, I think I'll, I'll post a little vote link. Um, I want Grace to be able to post her little pitch as well. And then we'll vote and move on from there. Okay, uh, honestly, that's all I really had planned. Most of my other classes have a lot more presentations left to give, um, so you guys got through quickly. Um, looking back at Canvas to that same tasks list, uh, the homework is also posted there. So um, you've all made your videos. Um, the, what I'd like you to do is just watch everyone else's videos that are posted. Um, hopefully Grace will get hers on there by tomorrow or, um, 
over the weekend. And then just be ready to come back together to vote um, at the start of our next class session. I almost wonder if we should just do it at the start and watch each one or something. I don't know. The point was to kind of give you a, a review of everybody's, but I think you'll form your opinion over the weekend. Like I think you'll know who you want to vote for. So we'll start our next class with a vote. And um, there is also some reading. So we are going to move on to uh, physics a little bit. Uh, this is going to be our kind of last big unit. Um, and so I'd like you to start reading chapter five in Hewitt, um, specifically chapter 5.1 through 5.4. Um, it's actually only, I think it's two or three pages. It's not very long. Uh, and just the usual deal, um, take notes either in your digital notebook uh, on in the doc, or if you want to take notes in a notebook or on paper, that's okay as well. Um, but just make sure you have something to refer to for a little do now reading quiz that we'll have at the start of our next class period. Then we'll vote and we'll start doing some physics activities. Any questions on that? Uh, I am hoping that as we go through this, I'll, for lab activities and stuff, I might give you guys a little notice like, hey, for our next class period, you might need, you know, a piece of string or floss. You might need um, an egg or an empty plastic bottle. People feel like they'd be able to pull together simple materials like that. Okay, this, again, this is all new to me, but we'll, uh, we'll figure something out that, uh, You'll have to run and grab something and I'll try to give you at least like um, adequate, you know, um, ample time to try to collect things. And if you can't get certain materials, then we'll just watch each other's or something. So we'll, we'll figure something out. But all right, kids, um, that's it for me. Thanks so much. Uh, everything, homework and everything's already posted and a good job with your presentation. So watch each other's uh, Flipgrid videos, uh, figure out who you're going to vote for and we'll vote the next time we meet on um, Tuesday. All right. That's it. Thanks very much. Bye. Stay safe out there. Later.